is uh, Remy Sanavid and uh, I'm working at uh, Orange and uh, I am a developer. Yeah, and I'm Johan, uh, I'm an independent developer. Uh, I like uh, working with teams. It makes me. Okay, so this, this session is about uh, hexagonal architecture. So I will let uh, Johan explain what is uh, hexagonal architecture. Well, it's, uh, it, it's a way of, of uh, separating your business logic in a central module and uh, then you uh, create ports through which you can interact with your application or with your business logic and to these ports you, you fix like a, a database or you fix a UI or, or any other ways to, to interact with the, with the external world. Yes. So it's, uh, yeah, this is the this definition by Elster Corban which uh, cannot be invented or if you just uh, formalized it. So the, the um, uh, uh, that's a um, more uh, practical way of looking at it. Um, this is from Alistair Corona's uh, website where it's, you have your application here and around the application you have like a, a layer or several parts of code which are interacting with the database or with uh, a UI uh, and it doesn't really matter if it's a backend thing or a frontend thing. It's, it's basically the same thing. You have a port and you, you pull a, you pull a, you, you adapt, you, you put an adapter into it. So uh, you have your application. The application defines ports, and you write adapters between those ports and the tools or frameworks you're using to interact with them as well. So the adapter are decoupled. On the, the business uh, layer. But um, there are three things in the, uh, this architecture. It's the application, which contains all the business logic. It doesn't depend on anything, almost. Uh, as little dependencies as possible. So your business logic is clean and not linked to a tool which might, might change. And it defines those ports. This is the way I want to persist. Uh, this is the way I want to present your user profile. Uh, it's like a contract interface. Then there are those adapters that are actually uh, presenting this on a web page or uh, publishing a web service doing this. Or uh, this is the way I actually store in MongoDB what uh, do I want to persist. Yes, and what is nice is, as we will can see it, is that you can inject it for tests of what you want. So it's quite nice for testing. But there is a missing module. How does, uh, how can this not depend on this? And, and uh, how, how can <coughs> it start? Uh, well, of course, it, you could have the startup logic and the, and the connection logic in here, but you have several adapters. So you have like another module, which might be uh, materialized by your, your Spring configuration in a Java application or something, which is actually booting the application and, and, and instantiating this adapter with the business logic and this adapter and this adapter and this adapter and then connecting it all together. Yes, they create instance and create the link between the instance, like a Spring <coughs> text. So we will, have, we will show you an application, a demo from, a, from code. So we will have one code is from controller, what we call a compression controller. It's quite small, but uh, okay. So the idea of the application is a sign-up page. Okay, just uh, when you want to go to, go to one application, you have a sign-up page. You enter your identifier, your credential, and then you 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 hope that uh, you can be uh, go, go through the application. So we have three. Uh, Three uh, use cases we will see uh, later. So this uh, controller asks a business layer, a service layer that we call uh, account services. Okay, and this layer is aimed to uh, to uh, validate that you are uh, able or not to uh, to go to the application. So that's a normal layer uh, application, architecture application. So we have three use cases. The first one is when it's okay or it's okay. So we can see that in the business services, the services layer, 
is in this house. The result equation is true, so it's okay. And then here we go through the conditional and it will return that's all is okay. We can through the the, uh, the application page, the home page. Okay. We have um, another use case that is for waiting. That we have problem during the the verification of the process, and then you return false, and the controller uh, redirect to a, to a page that say that's not possible now. We will see what's uh, what your problem. And then the last use case is a, a KO. You can't. You have a problem. You have a technical problem, technical exception. So you catch it and the controller, and then also you redirect. To the page to say that you can't, uh, you are not able to go to the through the application. Okay. All right. So what is the problem of the layer uh, layer architecture? One of the problem is what are the business rules? It's difficult when you enter on the code to find where what is your business rule. Is a where is also the business rule? Not just what are, but also where is. When you know what is your business rule, you don't know always where it is because it can be in the controller, it can be also in the services layer, and in both layer, as we we saw for the conditional. The second problem is a conditional duplication. As we see, we have a conditional here report to this one. This conditional report to this one and this conditional report to this one. So we duplicate always the conditional business rule. That's the problem. Because we uh, we broke on the encapsulation of the business rule. So when you want to maintain or evaluate your code, it's quite difficult. You have to maintain both of the, of the classes. And the layer architecture leads to procedural way of coding, as you see with if and else, not in the object-oriented way of programming. So it's right to be done right with this file. OK, so we will see from this, uh, in the demo, we will see the layer architecture it's in this state. And we will see how to change it in uh, hexagonal architecture. So for the implementation, we will have the open services. We'll define the port what we call creation response. And we will create a HTTP creation response that defines when it's success or when it's waiting or how. Right? And it's an adapter. OK, so I will let, uh, I will give the floor to uh, Yuan. So it will be a live coding now. <coughs> Is this a good size for everyone? Or should I decrease the size for the, the people in the back? Okay. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's um, let's see how how this problem is particularly visible in the tests. So uh, all. Uh, so I have three met three met three test methods here of the controller. It redirects to the error page if the service returns false. It redirects to the error page uh, if the service throws an exception, etc., etc. Th these are not kind of uh, unit tests you would use in a specification by example because they are way too technical. It returns true, exception, and, and so on. And <coughs> and it's quite annoying to to develop this because you're basically developing two tests for every concern. You have the same things here in the, in the service. You are not just duplicate the code, the source code from the service and the controller, but also for tests. So you have to maintain four classes. So the solution is you don't do tests and you do the test with duplication. <laughs> um, now, the <coughs> uh, now we're going to solve this problem. Um, the way we're going to solve this problem here is that instead of uh, waiting, uh, expecting a return value, we're going to uh, pass it a callback object. So we're going to pass it to an object, and the service layer will tell this object 
if it's success or if it is the other case pending this, your account will be created by the back office but, uh, but not, not right now and and this object will actually do these things like the, the, uh, the success thing is I'm doing this and the pending thing is I'm doing that so we'll need a new object uh, so it's creation and response or sign up response, but uh, yeah, that's a better name. But uh, let's use the one. Uh, let's use the one I'm used to. Uh, <coughs> so now it's just I create a class. I want to create an interface here. Okay. Instantiating the interface with, with nothing in it. Uh, I will need two methods in this interface. Oh, by the way, I, I, I do have tests for this. Uh, I'm not relying on these tests, uh, the account controller and the service test, because they will interfere with the fact that I'm changing the interface between two classes, so the unit tests for those classes not, are not going to help me, they're going to hinder me. I have written another type of test, which you will see more of in, in our workshop tomorrow. Uh, very concise, covers all of the code, and totally unmaintainable, but unmaintainable, but it will serve the purpose for this refactor. Um, so, I'll need two methods here in my creation response. I'll need void success, and I'll need void um, pending. Is creating the adapter box of the hexagonal architecture? Oh. And then I need to implement these methods. Okay, so in the success case, I should do this, right? So let's just copy this piece of code here. It's temporary copy. <laughs> and it doesn't know response. Uh, I'll use a trick to make it compile. I put this file and, and it will work. Uh, this is so I can use automated refactoring much more. And I'll do the other one, the pending one. Put that in the, here. All right. So now I'm. I have an object that will do the job if the service layer calls it. So I will pass it to the create account. So I will do change message signature. I will add a parameter, which is creation response, uh, response, and by default, uh, yeah, no. Now, I use this this change method signature because otherwise, in all of these. Uh, In all these tests, I was, I was calling this thing. So it changed all the places where, where this method was called at the same time. I don't know if so my workspace is all red and so on. Um, so this is a creation response. And I'll pass it here. Now, uh, you can see my test path because I have infinite tests which is always executed by tests. Very easy, I've got my response. Everywhere I'm returning false, I have to do response pending. Right here, right, not here, because here we're using success. What is cool is that rather to say in technical way that it's true or false, you are doing in the business rule and way to say it. It's like a DSL to say, yes, I want to success and to fire, not mm. to say I'm um, true or false. True or false in technical layer, technical point of view. It's not a business point of view. And response pending also in the exception case, right? 
uh, still compiles. Now that I'm returning this, this thing, I, I could probably use this in the controller, right? Uh, instead of, I mean, I should probably be able to delete this because it's already being done by the callback, right? So it works. Okay, so I'll delete that. And I don't need this one anymore. And I don't need this one. So now I could probably uh, remove the fact that it returns a value. Now the create account could be a, a void, right? That's because we needed the value just to duplicate the conditional. But now, because we have a callback, we don't need to be anymore. Should do change signature there also. But it didn't compile now. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see if that makes things better. Yeah, it's I don't know how, how we should uh, do this in a better way, but uh, replace all. As you have said, we don't use this test for, for the refactoring part and we use another one, so it's no problem to uh, remove the self part. Okay, uh, now things are working well. Uh, and I can remove this boolean. Yeah? This one and this one and this one. Okay, cool. There's more things we can do in the account creation controller here. We're catching an exception. Um, let me make this code a bit clearer here. We got an inline creation of, a, of an interface. I think this deserves a, a proper clause. So this is like a web creation response. Or actually, let's use another less good name for the reason you're... Sorry? Yes, HTTP. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. Uh, so this try and catch, we don't really need that anymore. It's doing a logging. Well, I'm not testing this logging, but if, if we want to, we could put the log in the other one, in the other uh, class. So let's just remove this. Bit too much, and I don't need this. And I can't do this anymore. Okay, good. So now we will reduce this uh, piece of logic. Uh, the, the controller doesn't do anything anymore, but with, that's because it's a simplified example. It's still probably 150 lines longer than, than the real code. Um, <coughs> so now we have this adapter here, uh, the, um, in, um, this port here, the creation response. Let's extract that one because it's the central part of the of the application. Actually, uh, it's defined here. And now what's interesting is I'm, I'm extracting this one too, the implementation of the creation response, which is web specific, or web UI specific. So I, I, I can't let this one right here, right? It's part of the adapter module. It's not part of my uh, application. So the bare minimum would be to uh, create a new package, which is, uh, um, you are or something like that. And I'll move that one here. What's the problem?
Okay, so uh, now we're done with the refactoring. Uh, let's have a look at what it does with the tests. How the tests become more business facing. You know, they were technical before. So I'm not going to take you through all of that. Um, I'm, I've saved uh, an example.
external architecture uh, and then the use of callback that I just demonstrated, it's a tool. I mean, you probably shouldn't use it for every true and false kind of uh, response, but uh, it, it is useful in, in several cases. Uh, like this one, we could now more easily publish the same logic uh, through a web service uh, or, um, or, uh, or mobile, or even use it as a um, uh, like a batch application to send uh, emails or whatever. Uh, creating a new and user interface becomes very easy. Um, the tests were business oriented, so we can share them more and we can verify the correctness more. Uh, there we centralized business rules in one pass. Uh, that's that's kind of nice. Uh, I think that touches the domain driven design very very nicely. And, and uh, this is kind of one of my defin definitions of good code. If I can see the business rules, it's pretty good code. It's also a possibility that you can also decide later about the definitive choice of the tool. If we isolate ourselves more from the tool we're using, we can easily replace it. In addition, if we have tests that are actually testing only the adapter through the interface of the port, then we can swap it and and uh, and it will uh, safely. Uh, particularly true for databases and uh, stuff like that. Uh, if you know that you, if you save a person, then you can uh, get it back. That's any resistance to yes. it's good like for a rare option I don't know if you know rare option but you can decide later mm -hmm. when is it's the time to decide not when you try to develop perhaps it's better to, to wait to decide which type of implementation you want yeah. but it's always good to decide later unless it's costly and it's not costly uh, and of course, uh, testability is great because you can test your whole application just putting in an in-memory database and uh, whatever kind of uh, UI you want, and uh, it's much more testable than the ones you're probably using in production. And uh, what is interesting too is that uh, you can code in an oriented way, uh, just in a procedural way, because you don't have the conditional, and you have the encapsulation of the business, the HTTP. Uh, operation response. So it's quite nice because you know now that you can go through directly in this class. So for the test, we don't see it uh, for this session because we we prefer to present the source code and the hexagonal architecture. But how to write test from, uh, for the refactoring, we'll have a workshop tomorrow. So if you're interested, we can uh, have some uh, a workshop that train how to write this type of test. So it's why we don't uh, pass some time about it. So there are some links if you are interested by this uh, new architecture. So I'm going to actually get to have some link about it. Okay. Uh, secure is kind of linked to this. All right, so I don't know if you have some question. Um, question. Um, does this work well with uh, software hardware integrated um, software? I mean, like in an embedded case, when you have much dependencies on the real hardware? Um, I don't know. There's a, there's a cost to, to introducing the, 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 the direction. Mm -hmm. The more dependencies you have, the more costly it is. Mm. Uh, I don't know. The, um, if you look at the benefits of the principal benefits, which one would you be interested in? Uh, centralizing business rules and testability. Okay. You can probably find places mm -hmm. where, it, where it's easier than others. This is not something you have to uh, do all of your application. It's not like one month refactoring sprint to make make it. You can you can do this very locally. This is this I took an example of one controller. We had loads of them. And, um, yeah. So that I think that's a 
I have, when I see this, this image, this hexagon, I have in mind my whole application in the center and the, 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 the ports around, but uh, now I think you mean you can use this image of the hexagon for mm -hmm. every part, wherever you like. Yeah, yes. you can go there gradually. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might, you might not actually go all the way, it doesn't really matter. In, in some places it will be more useful, and if you're doing it, you're, you're gaining most of the... Of the what, uh, what is interesting, uh, as you can see, the stroke uh, in the demo, that is not a big bang refactoring. Yes. You can do it and keep the layer architecture and start to introduce hexagonal architecture inside. Mm -hmm. you see? So, so, so it's quite it's very interesting and you can do it in baby steps. So that's good. Yeah, that's right. That's very helpful. So, I don't know if it was clear or not, <laughs> but yeah, one question. So uh, this is for the case where uh, the call is being made from uh, uh, the controller, so the application is uh, being called. But uh, for the case uh, of the repository, uh, you the port is used when you are calling the implementation. Uh, yeah. So the question is, this is the user side. Uh, yeah. Someone is calling the application, and what, what about when we are calling exactly. the, the the adapter? Um, didn't we have another slide with the like the the, the links to the exercises? Uh, sure. I will see. I see that I have. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, what are you concerned about in this case? Or what, what do you want to see how it works, or yeah, something like that? All right. So the the image we have with the dependency inversion there. the case where we're calling yeah. a database. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So this this one for example will have a method like a, a get all this taken from like from one of the exercises. Yeah. Uh, like uh, how get me all the employees that, whose birthday is today. Okay. You might have add an employee or or uh, Set the set the birth date of this employee. What if the application depends on something uh, external or service or something like that? Like a web service? Like a web service. It's using an adapter to connect to a port. It's switching. It doesn't yeah. provide a port. It's using an adapter to connect to a port. This could. Very well, be the web service and not like a, a file one. It could be a, a MySQL, it could be a third party web service. We have a, like a, another application that actually takes care of the employees. Another thing would be uh, I want to send these guys a mail. So I would have a web service that accepts uh, requests for sending mail. Yeah, I'm saying others. Instead of having the employee repository interface in the application, we will have an implementation, uh, another in interface in the application, and we will have an interface outside. No, you don't want the interface outside. Yeah. You, you don't, don't want the interface to be outside the application. Because that's the application saying, I want this service. And, and I get to decide how that service is going to look like. It's not the framework is deciding for me. And, and I, I only need this <coughs> kind of services. And the framework provides all that, but I just want this. Oh, so Simple business facing. Typically, in this uh, uh, use case, you will have the ports, and you have the stop here, and you, you will have an adapter, and you will make the, the link between the, the, the ports and the web service by the stop generator. Oh. So, so usually this file employee repository is actually an adapter to the real service that you might use. 
yeah, this is own interfaces and whatever. It's implementing, uh, I don't know, uh, new file, uh, read mm. old data, and that kind of stuff. What, what if you want to interact with the service or with an entity that um, implies some uh, handling of the I don't know, way you handle I.O.? For example, you are interacting with the queue and you need to <coughs> perform tracking or you need to perform, uh, I don't know, to wait for some messages. Where would you implement that uh, logic? Uh, will that be inside the domain? I think not because that's where we want to preserve the logic in that. So, would that be in the adapter? The, the I logic I for having yeah communication. Yeah, get the, the, the logic that was yeah. there. If I understand why it's for asynchronous or something like yes, that. Yes, you need to implement logic for interacting with the, with the queue, for example. Yes. So, where is that logic in the method? Where is the logic in the queue? I think that depends on are you are you really want to uh, rely on a queue, or or or, or is that a implementation detail? I don't know. Yes. For example, if you want to interact with the queue, it's a specific technology. So Could you speak uh, a little bit. Yes. Okay. So yeah, if you want to interact with the queue, it's a specific technology, and uh, there's some some way to handle that bit of uh, integration, right? So you don't want your domain model to be polluted with uh, that specific uh, technology. That's uh, it's valid for uh, I don't know interacting with the database. There is technology and there is paradigm. Right. So there is in a queue there is paradigm which is like right. overall you find all over no matter the tool you're using. So okay. I wouldn't refrain from implementing that in the application. Uh, but I, I think it depends on the case. Yes, uh, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure if you are thinking about it because I haven't uh, met this, uh, this context, but I think that it depends. Depends if your business want to work in this way and define this contract. Let's suppose uh, of, uh, it shouldn't. Uh, uh, it shouldn't, so I would say it could be in the adapter. So control between the queue. And this, it don't, does not know if you have a queue or not. Okay, so uh, then interacting with that queue would mean that you will, will have a callback from the interface, right? The interface will call your code in the domain, otherwise you'll have to do a synchronous call on the interface. So that's the key, I think. Yeah, you can put a callback in the interface, of course. Right. Okay. Um, because you're a coder, uh, best thing is to try this through coding. So the example I just showed you is available on GitHub. There's another one done by Matteo Cari, uh, Bacari, which is very good, very easy. Do it with your friends or colleagues and work on it. It's, it's, uh, I really recommend it. It's for the birthday group in Stockholm and it's also available there. Okay, thank you. Do you have to stop? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, you can continue the discussions at uh, the 15 minutes coffee break. Uh, or, yes, during the open space. Good, yeah, thank you, Claudia. Um, so you can go at the coffee group break, but don't forget to leave us feedback, to leave feedback for any Okay. Okay, and um, uh, just a small reminder, uh, you can pass by the orange uh, booth. They have small quiz and interesting prizes if you are interested.